Every time I think about those kids, it gets me mad. And by the way, it happens on the streets of Chicago every day. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of free states the right of the people to bear arms shall not be infringed. Now, Mr. President, just what part of shall not be infringed don't you understand, jackass? I give you some credit. Your little speech, your little speech on your executive orders there in the White House, that was a, that was a heck of a performance. I got to give you I got to give you the slow clap on that one, Mr. Obama. Your little crocodile tears coming down. My, man, that was that was almost convincing. Hearing you cry, seeing you cry at the thought of a little kid being the victim of gun violence. Yes, it would bring to a, a tear to a glass eye. And yes, it is sad, no doubt about it. But the more I thought about it after, after I saw you do that, uh, I just thought to myself that I don't remember seeing you cry on any of the occasions where a bunch of Muslims ran into an office building and shot up a bunch of innocent Americans. I don't remember seeing you cry there. I also don't remember seeing you cry when another Muslim uh, went to a uh, military recruitment facility in Chattanooga, Tennessee and shot that up. I don't recall seeing you cry at that gun violence. Nor do I remember seeing you cry when yet another Muslim up in Roseburg, o Roseburg Oregon went on a like killing spree up there, killing people that said they were Christians and shooting the rest just in the leg. But if you were Christian, you were dead. I don't remember you crying there. I don't remember you crying when yet another Muslim, are you seeing a trend here, went to a military installation in Fort Hood and shot it up. Oh, you called that workplace violence, not gun violence, and certainly not terrorism. I don't remember you crying in any of those cases. I don't remember you crying when yet another set of Muslim brothers set up a bomb inside of the Boston Marathon and killed and injured a bunch of innocent Americans. I don't recall seeing you cry each and every day when 3,000 innocent babies are murdered by Planned Parenthood and other abortionists. No, I don't see you cry there. I don't see you cry every day when street thugs, urban street thugs, go out and rob and kill and rape and murder. I never see you cry there. But you know what I do see you do? Whenever we have one of these incidents where a Muslim goes through and kills a bunch of people in whatever manner they do it, via, via stabbing, via shooting, via beheading, as happened in Oklahoma one time, via bombing, whatever it is, I never see you cry, but I do see you criticize us and caution us not to jump to conclusions and caution us not to hate their culture or their religion, even though it is their culture and their religion that necessitates people like us being armed at all times to protect ourselves. But no, we're not supposed to pass judgment. We're just supposed to be sitting ducks. I don't recall seeing you cry when street thugs attack police officers try to kill him, but I do see in those cases where the police officer successfully defends himself and the street thug gets what's coming to him, I do often see you come out of the woodwork and criticize the police and the police departments they work for, for their enforcement of the laws. You know, the people that were attacked by the thug are criticized by you for doing their damn job. Now, That's the environment that good, right-thinking Americans are living in right now in which we have to protect ourselves because what is good is now considered evil in your world. What is right is now considered wrong in your world. 
and it's good, law-abiding, right-thinking American people that are in the crosshairs each and every day whenever we leave our houses. Maybe you don't see that because you're protected. That could be understandable to a degree, but we see it every day out in the streets. I live here in Missouri. You, in your speech today, you criticized Missouri laws that repealed some kind of background checks, and you claimed that that led to a 50% increase in gun violence. I think you're missing something and not taking something into account. You may recall a little incident just a few miles down the street from here called Ferguson. And while you and your folks have said that there's been no documented Ferguson effect, we who live here can tell you that yes, crime has increased. Not only has crime increased, not only has violence increased, but it's moved. It's no longer just in those ghetto areas where it always used to remain. Now the criminals are getting confident. Now the criminals are going into downtown. They're going into places they never would have gone before because they know that the police departments are under a lot of scrutiny. They're going to think twice before they take aggressive action. And the criminals here in the St. Louis area, they're having a field day, and we're not alone. That is why we have to defend ourselves. Let's make no mistake, the Second Amendment is not about hunting and recreation, even though a good number of us use it for those purposes most often. The Second Amendment, at its core, is about self-protection, our right to protect ourselves from each other and, yes, from a tyrannical government in the event that it gets out of control. In fact, that application of the Second Amendment is going on right now up in Oregon, and God bless those ranchers for doing so. Mr. Obama, over these last seven years, you have stood by and stood for and emboldened those very people who are the cause of the violence in America today, the Muslims, the urban street thugs. You've sided with them. You've advised the rest of us to treat them with kit gloves. I have my doubts if you truly want to make an impact on gun violence, Mr. President, but if you do, might I suggest that you need not touch the Second Amendment Instead, the very first thing you should do is look in the goddamn mirror. Folks, this is America's evil genius, Travis Cook. Feel free to join us every Tuesday afternoon on truthfrequencyradio.com, 90.7 FM in Denver, 97.3 FM in Eugene, Oregon, for more discussion like this each and every week. We hope to see you there. It's at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time every Tuesday afternoon, noon on the West Coast. Until next time. God bless America. Godspeed.